Dr. Fizz here on the magnetic field. I'm going to comment here on the basic physics of this section and you're going to work out the details. The details are mainly algebra and I'm going to show you all those steps in the notes but you should write them out. It's excellent practice. Well we start here with a wire in the laboratory frame and the wire has current moving to the right, positive current, which means the electrons move to the left, and the spacing between the positive charges is given by L sub lab, and the spacing between the electrons in the lab frame, L sub lab. When the current starts and the electrons start to move, they move in step, so this uh, distance is still the same that's viewed in the laboratory frame, and therefore when a charge is at rest and it sees these paired off like this at the same you know, distances um, from charge to charge, you have the same density, charge density, uh, you have neutrality, positive and negative cancel, and there's no force. However, if the uh, test charge Q moves to the right at speed V, it sees the positive charge is moving to the left at speed V, and the negative charge is moving faster because they're moving V naught with respect to the wire, which is now moving at speed V to the left with respect to the test charge. So it will see the negative charges packed closer together due to the extra Lorentz contraction. This will make the wire appear more negative and the test charge, which is positive, will then be attracted to the wire and there'll be the sideways force. That's the secret, that's the essential physics that uses special relativity and the electric field to show there's a sideways force, which you know is the magnetic force. To set this problem up, you use your infinite line of charge formula. So you have your uh, charges of your positive and your negative. So you will use this formula that we had earlier. And we'll put the minus sign in by hand. We know the electron density will win over the positive density. And the force will be upward, attracted to the wire. We have three frames of reference we need to focus our attention on. One frame is the K frame, the laboratory frame. That's the frame in which the wire is at rest. The K prime frame is our usual frame moving at speed V down the x-axis, and that's the speed for the charge Q. The K double prime frame is the frame in which the electrons are moving. So the frame that moves with the electrons is K double prime, and that's moving at speed V naught with respect to the laboratory. So the test charge Q will see the positive charge is moving to the left at V, so that would be beta. And for the electrons, it sees them moving at some total speed, which is a combination of the V naught and the V of the wire going to the left. You know how to add those two together relativistically, and here's the result. And I'm going to show you how you can quickly get to this equation down here, which is your setup. This is your charge over your separation distance as measured in the moving frame, the test particle frame. So what we're going to do is think of how to arrive at this easily. If you want to know the separation between the electrons as you see it from your prime frame, you need to start out with the proper length first. And the proper length is the separation between two electrons in the electron frame, in the double prime frame. Then you hit that with the Lorentz contraction based on how fast you see those electrons moving, which is some total beta we talked about earlier. Then for the positive charges, you start with the separation distance in the natural frame where they are at rest, and that is the laboratory frame. And you hit it with the Lorentz contraction factor for the positive charges using the speed for the positive charges as you see them go, and that's V to the left. You also want to write this in terms of the L lab. That's nicer to do that. We want to reference things to the laboratory. So how do we get rid of L double prime? Same principle. You want to look at what the electron separation uh, is in terms of the proper length, so you put the proper length 
of the separation for electron to electron in its own frame, the double prime frame, and you hit it with the speed, with the electric attraction factor and the speed in plugged in that goes with how fast those electrons are moving relative to you. And that is the V naught, so we put the beta naught in. So once when you do that, you have your setup and it looks it looks complicated and it looks actually more complicated than this one because when you put in for the relativistic addition of the speeds to get the beta total for those electrons you get this but this is the fun of theoretical physics we're going to work this through and this time you're not going to see really a shortcut you're going to see good old-fashioned algebra but the miracle is that after you do this algebra and I'm showing you the steps there but you really need to write them out, you will find a cancellation of a lot of terms and a very, very simple result. When we get this far, uh, I have, by the way, put the Q in there uh, with the E prime to get the force. This is in the reference frame, K prime, and I like to have this in the laboratory frame. Very easy to do because when you have a transformation of the force in the Y direction, you're doing the derivative of the momentum in the y direction and since there's no motion of the k prime frame relative to the laboratory frame in the y direction there's no contraction there's, there's no funny business there the momentum is going to be the same the only difference is your time your Lorentz transformation your time and we know how to set this up uh, with the delta t and delta t prime same principle I want to look at delta t prime from the laboratory frame. So I start with delta t prime as the proper time in its own frame and hit it with a time dilation to get the time I measure. How uh, fast uh, are we talking here? Well we're talking v, so we use beta, v over c. So when you do that you get then a nice equation which we're going to group the constants uh, epsilon naught and c squared and to find a new constant mu sub naught which you recognize as the magnetic force constant and this is the magnetic permeability of the vacuum or free space or simply the permeability of free space but look at it as the constant that goes with the magnetic force just like the epsilon naught is the constant that goes with the electric force so you're almost finished when you get this far it's a matter of looking at what is this grouping here the charge over the laboratory spacing of the charges times v naught and when you do that you will find that you will get uh, a nice little uh, cancellation here uh, that the v, the v naught here when you plug in L lab over over the time t uh, this is uh, basically your speed of your electrons v naught moving to the left so that means the electrons will go the distance L lab and time t and this will cancel and q over t is your current and the current we use I for and then we get this nice expression where we have grouped here the uh, parameters of the moving test charge and then everything else and you may recognize this to be the magnetic field for current in a wire. Uh, this magnetic field because it is cylindrical symmetry we pick the theta hat vector which wraps around the wire and this convention will be uh, obvious to you in a second. Let me just review for you that that rule. Uh, when you uh, line your thumb in the direction of the current, the current's going to flow to the ground, say negative, uh, then that current flowing in that direction, uh, you find that uh, your fingers will curve this way and that's the way we would like to define the magnetic field for symmetry uh, of that uh, wire and that enables us to relate to this nice force that you learned. So if you didn't know about this force and this definition, this shows you why it's natural to make that definition. For example, if I have current in a wire, it's natural that the magnetic field be chosen to be into the page right here where the uh, test charge is because if you take the vector of the velocity vector and cross it with that magnetic field, V cross B, you turn it into the page right hand rule screwdriver down here turning this into the uh, 
B field, you get this answer. So it makes sense that you would define it this way based on the symmetry. And that gets you V cross B, that gets you QVB, and there's your B, and there's your theta hat into the page here. Nice definition. So that gets us our complete form of the Lorentz force where you have Q times the electric vector field and now we have added this piece for the magnetic uh, force, the sideways force, and the magnetic field for the uh, current in a wire can be written this in this fashion where look at this, this is the circumference and the magnetic field as we defined it lines up with the circumference the little arc element going around around the wire B lines up with that uh, you see that you know here very nicely how if you go around in a circle B would line up with the uh, little differential arc element so that means uh, we can write this as a closed loop line integral where B is then multiplied by 2 pi r because the unit vector you know, lines up in each case here and that's your Ampere's law which you've learned in electricity and magnetism. Uh, notice that if we were to uh, swallow up here uh, with a, an enclosed surface all the uh, magnetic field lines close in on themselves there's no piercing through the uh, surface and if there's no piercing through the surface then this integral is zero. And we have here two of the Maxwell equations and part of a third Maxwell equation. We're going to see we have to add a piece to this but this is a lot that we have accomplished and this uh, force law here in combination with this gives you the total picture and let's look at our three sciences here that have contributed much in this area. Coulomb, Gauss, and Ampere.